This episode of Co-op is brought to you by Squarespace, GoDaddy, Netflix. Oh wait, I forgot and. to say and. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to uh, Napper Tandy, which is a really fun name for a restaurant, I think. One. And uh, two, they make a mean macaroni and cheese with bacon. Oh, I should also point out, new shirt today. We got these at GDC this week. Uh, Matt, everybody on Area 5 got one. We all have different ones. These are for uh, Polytron, the company that's doing Fez. Worth every penny. It's good material. It's American apparel. What if life was like Squarespace? Squarespace is a publishing system for anyone looking to build a blog, portfolio, or any kind of website. Squarespace offers a uniquely flexible tool for just about anyone, no coding experience required, to build high-end, complex websites with the same functionality and uniqueness that you find on some of the highest traffic pages on the web. Good taste not included. Sign up today and use promo code COOP. Gentlemen, to a nice long week at GDC. Somebody cheers. It's been a long week. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we thought for a second this would be easier uh, because we didn't have anyone to report to. It was a, it was a little easier. It, it was funner. It was yeah. way it's funner. True. Yeah. It was the funnest iPod ever. Definitely didn't feel right not having to like run around and get trailers and put interviews up like as fast as I mean, we, we still do. We still went to the keynotes and everything though. I yeah. mean, we did everything. But I did more than I ever would have done at a GDC before. And more than anything, the IGF is always the always. coolest thing on the show floor. I just love yeah. hanging out at the pavilion and looking at what's on what they got to offer. There's so much cool stuff there. Well, like, yeah, the, the unfinished swan. Like, literally, I walk up to the screen, and he's all, okay, uh, pick up the controller. He's like, okay, the game is starting. I'm just staring at a white yeah. screen. It's blank slate. Yeah, just blank Nothing. slate. gameplay session uh, last night explaining his, his process. Uh, yeah, he had a lot of interesting things to say about trying to avoid making it a puzzle game, but still have different types of interactions that are interesting. Right. But it, it's just a whole negative space thing that's, that's so interesting. It's it's all wide, it's all open, but at the same time it feels almost claustrophobic because there's nothing there, and the way you you reveal the environment through the main gameplay mechanic, that's beautiful. That's, uh, that's art. It's almost like anti-level design. Let's say that you're designing a Gears of War level or something like that. The thing that you would want the least is to put somebody into, into an environment and 
have them guess where to go, yeah. and that's where this game starts out at. Yeah, and also it looks really good, I find. The aesthetic is yeah. just, it's fantastic. Yeah, I want more games that, that do like just drastically different things like that visually. Yeah. Like, this has a really interesting mechanic, but right. even if it was just visual. game design comes about from testing and from sure. actually having people play it, which is what all the indie developers said. They were all like, oh, the best thing about being here is having all these people play my game while I'm standing right here next to them. It's all, like, all the other indie developers, too, all yeah, play the games yeah. and the judges, and everyone gives all this free feedback, yeah. which yeah. is really great. You know, I mean, speaking of game testing, the one that I felt that benefited the most, obviously from the most game testing already, was the first one I spotted was Tag. We've seen a lot of good stuff come out of Digipin over the last couple of years, and I guess you guys are kind of the, the latest success story, I would say. Yeah. Did you get an A? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, how can you not deal with an A? Right. Yeah. <laughs> So what, what what does everyone do on the project? Like, can I get you guys? Oh, so it was mainly a four-person team. So we're four programmers that worked on it. We just kind of divided up the work. He did the physics, the graphics, did all the level stuff, and I did all the engine stuff. Nice. And then she did the she made the logo for our game, and she did some of the texture work and stuff like that. Was the engine custom made, or did you guys? Uh, yeah, yeah, everything's made from scratch because uh, that's part of the that's part of the program. We got to make our own engine, so it's our own physics, our own graphics. We use Deathmod for sound, but everything else is, is our own. I actually am wondering a little bit about the uh, the art style because it's it's very simplistic on purpose, I'm sure. Yeah. So, but I'm wondering, like, was it ever tempting for you guys to be like, ah, oh, we have to go full on, you know, Gears of War, yeah. ultra <laughs> no, realism, see, or we're nobody's we're gonna we're pay we're attention to it? One of one of the reasons. I mean, it's obviously it was a, it was a design choice for us yeah. to go with the art style. But even if we even if we didn't, like we really couldn't pull off a different art, uh, like a more realistic looking art style, because right. we're mainly four programmers and we can do boxes really well. <laughs> anything apart from that is kind of not cool. <laughs> and then we also like the whole the grayscale art style, because we like every all the color in the world is color that you can use. Right. So you can only, the only colors in the world are R, G, and B, and everything else is just gray. So if you see something that's already green, you can use that to jump off of. Right. So we didn't want to confuse the player with adding more colors, and then what do these colors do? They don't do anything. Right. How did you guys do your play testing for this? I mean, I imagine with, with how good a, a curve you guys have, you must have been, it must have been hours. So if someone's playing, there's always four of us sitting behind them, taking notes, figuring out what they're doing, seeing what they're doing wrong, what they're doing right. Smart. And as soon as we see something that they're doing wrong, we just go up there and be like, dude, roll on, let me just fix this level for you. We fix it, and then we have them put play it again. And then we're like, okay, he's like, now it's fun. Right. Wow. Cool. That, that was our basic play testing. It was just like, and we sat in like the biggest lab in school. We sat right at the entrance. So anytime someone walked walk by, you, they make eye contact and you got them. <laughs> like, yeah, they make eye contact with the game and they're like, you saw it, you gotta play it now. <laughs> so you sit down, you play the game, you spend half an hour, play the entire thing, and then we'll see how it works. Yeah. So basically, you instituted a draft. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Involuntary. Yeah, the, the, the Miyamoto kidnapping method of yeah. uh, play testing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> No. Yeah. <laughs> tell, uh, tell people where they can get it. Yeah, you can get it from our website completely free. It's uh, www.thepowerofpaint.com. Nice. It's a free download. You can play it. It's on Windows. If it doesn't work, just email us. We'll fix it. Right. GoDaddy.com makes it easy to customize your own virtual dedicated server. Choose one of three popular plans, or select your own Linux or Windows server with all the plan options you need. Plus, enter code CO5 when you check out, and save an additional $10 off any order of $40 or more. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. The super complex, the super... Um, <laughs> intensive game design that like I don't even fully understand yet. I have heard of it before but it wasn't really on my radar but after meeting him at the IGF and after hearing him talk about the game and like 
the, the way that the community is, is into it and everything. I'm like, okay, I gotta give this a shot, but even more so, I'm like, man, I gotta turn my little brother onto this game. Because my little brother, he's 14 years old, he programs like crazy on his calculator. He and his friends are always doing their calculator stuff. They're getting in trouble in school all the time because they can't stop programming with each other. But I'm like, okay, dude, I gotta get my little brother on this game and get him designing this shit because this is the this is the kind of thing that can absolutely, you know, push him into a path towards game design. And, you know, what's more awesome than that? Yeah. I gotta say that like looking over people's shoulders when I was seeing this earlier in the week, it looks insanely complex or whatever. Yes. Um, I, I don't think that I can, that I quite got it just by trying to look at it. Yeah, there's a lot of complexity in there. I mean, after you know eight years of trying to get as much cool stuff in there as I can, you know, a lot of it accumulated and it's kind of a little bit of a mess. So fair enough. <laughs> yeah, this is the you know first real user testing I've ever done. You know, so right, far. Right, right. people are coming here uh, that are better at the game than I am. Because they've been playing like competitively in their offices, <laughs> and I've never actually played against a good, guy, you know, good person. I've been, right. you know, play testing for eight years, but right. so they kick my ass, and it's a really surreal experience. <laughs> I bet. So, uh, yeah. It's kind of amazing because the game isn't done, no. and yet you, you're, you're sustaining yourself with it, and you already have this community yep. of modders. Yeah, and I mean, a year ago, we just realized. That, uh, we can actually sell this. <laughs> Even though it's not done, you know, no one can tell us not to do that. Right, yeah. It's been um, my main source of income for the last year. We started selling it a year ago. Nice. And it's not done yet, so we're selling it for a discount. Uh, just because it's not done yet. Right. Uh, and uh, people who buy it now don't have to pay anything more to get all versions up to the final version, including the final version. So we're ramen profitable now, right? So <laughs> right. <laughs> we, can, we can feed ourselves, and you know, it's actually better than ramen profitable because right. I, I have a decent lifestyle. But you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's it's working out. I mean, so I started this not with a commercial purpose. I, I started it as a way to teach myself game development. Right. And uh, I just bought books off of Amazon, and and you know what do I need to learn, you know, to, to finish this. And I vowed to myself to actually finish a game with this damn project. Right. <laughs> so I'm here, you know, almost a decade later, still working on it, but, you know, right. it's... But at least it's happening. Yeah. Then there's games that are, you know, where the, the appeal is... Kind of, I mean, unfinished one. I'm hoping that there's some good gameplay there, but there's games like Vice where Vice. almost it's yeah. almost completely the aesthetic right now that's that's making people interested in it. It's yeah. not that there's not any art game design so there, amazing. but the art is so good. Those postcards that were given out, like I was so bummed. I keep telling everyone, I uh, wish I had grabbed one of those postcards. They're like screenshots from the game is all they are, but they're so gorgeous that they're like a painting. They, yeah, yeah, each any, oh. each individual screenshot could be a, a really nice poster on your wall. Mm -hmm. That's what makes me want to play it so bad. I mean, yeah. Jay showed me the trailer uh, two weeks. And I was like, oh, it's kind of like a Loco Roco ish yeah. physics game simulation kind of thing, you know? Too. But it's, it's so beautiful that I'm, I'm like, I don't even care. I saw the trailer for Feist a few months ago. Right. Where it's just a really quick gameplay clips, and I just immediately I loved the art design. I mean, it's really simple. It's basically you have a forward movement, jumping up and down, and you can pick up and throw objects. The branches have their own physical properties to it. They said a lot of what they wanted to study was sort of moving around objects and a lot of physical stuff. They haven't even figured out a narrative yet or any sort of like you know, overall design. They're just basically it's kind of in a prototype phase where they're just seeing what kind of works gameplay wise. What we wanted to do is to create a world at first, so like we, we created the objects, the enemies, the player, um, 
could interact with each other in many different ways. And then at a later stage, we try not that, trying to figuring out what kind of game we can put in this world. So currently, what you're going to do is you start at the left side, and you're just going to get to the, to the right side. Right. And you can decide what you're going to do if you want to like face the enemies head on, try to defeat them, or just avoid them and try to figuring explore the world. Uh, all the objects lying around trying to figure out what they do. The different elements, I noticed that like your first one you can pick up a box and you can throw that, use it as a weapon or use it as a platform to get to a higher location. Yeah. And then there was also those fuzzy objects that stuck to the wall. And this one that was just using my favorite is that spiked ball. And I didn't realize when you pick it up and throw it, it attaches and you can actually see this guy is leashed to it now and can't run into you. Are there any other ideas that you guys have had this week as far as new elements or properties you're going to add to objects? Sure. Things you can actually pick up, like those uh, shiny balls that lift you up. You can pick those up. You can pick up some enemies in the game, just like the stones. You can like throw them at the enemy. You can try and use them to get up to you when you usually get to. You can build them up and try to get get them to something. So that's really important to us that objects don't have one single purpose. That you can use them in, in differently in, in depending on the situation. I mean, there's other good-looking games too, like uh, Blueberry Garden, which yep. you know, I, when you started playing it, we couldn't even figure out what the hell to yeah. do. You were just like jumping and flapping around and picking up some blueberries and turning blue. And, <laughs> you, know, you know, the experience didn't quite feel complete though until I actually put headphones on mm -hmm. when I was playing it, and I'm like, I was like, oh, yeah, the music's amazing. Oh, yeah. like the music in conjunction with the visuals, in conjunction with like this whole like very surreal. It was like you're, it's almost like you're playing a Salvador Dali painting or something like that. makes you ask yourself a lot of questions yeah. but I, I really think that's a strength uh, I came in with like very low expectations because I, I just didn't know what it was about I heard about it I saw a screenshot I thought it looked interesting but it's not like I expected a traditional platformer or a puzzle game it's just you have to to take things as they come in this game and just like what the hell is going on there I don't I have no idea Why you eat blueberries and turn blue? No. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I, at first I thought it would make you fly more. Then I figured maybe it has to do with the water because you have like a second of air and then you die. Uh, yeah. I actually found these stars in the level and, and if you eat the stars then it puts an air bubble around you so you can stay alive longer in the water. I never found those. Yeah. So it's stuff like that. So we're talking about it. There's right. like, there's discussion about this game because nobody really understands it. it. It feels like it has elements about it that are probably just toys, like eating a blueberry and turning blue. And there's other elements about it that are traditional game stuff, like explore and find ways to get further into yeah. the stage. It's, it's almost like an art sandbox. You know? Oh yeah, a garden. Right. Win though. Yeah, I won the grand prize, yeah. and Bastard was lucky enough to get the extra 10 grand this year. Oh, really? Yeah, Mountain Dew came in. It's like we're adding 10 grand to the grand prize this year. Oh, shit. It's, like, it's kind of a, a testament to how big of a deal IGF has become in the last couple of years. Yeah, exactly. It just keeps, you can actually get sponsors for oh, an yeah. event like this. Oh, whereas, yeah. like, if, seriously, a couple of years ago, none of this stuff was on anybody's radar. Oh, yeah. It was just like, oh, the indie game scene is kind of cool. There's some interesting stuff coming out of it, and occasionally there's something that would bubble to the surface, but now you got fucking Mountain Dew trying to come in and make it extreme so yeah, that must it, mean it's it's success. crazy because like it's Mountain Dew 
in Blueberry Garden, it's not like the grand prize was like the most commercially viable game. Like this isn't really. Yeah, that's true. It, this is bizarre. This isn't something that uh, you would expect to see on Xbox Live Arcade. Like maybe it'll be, but right. Uh, if it does, it's it's gonna be because it won the grand prize. Right. Which is which is great. Yeah. One, one thing that people kept telling me when I was at the whole, when I was like, oh yeah, we're gonna cover indie games, they were like, oh, you gotta check out Zite Squared, it's, uh, it's really interesting, they take a, a twist on the side-scroller shooter, you know? Right. And so that would seem really interesting to me, where he, when he came up to us, he's like, oh yeah, it's a game where you can, uh, where you can play co-op with yourself, and I was like, what does that mean? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Is that how he sounded? That's how he sounded. <laughs> well, it wasn't a girl, or else he would've sounded like, oh, you can play co-op with yourself! <laughs> It's a, a, a classic arcade side-scrolling shooting game, uh -huh. um, but then you have um, then you have the time travel mechanism to it, and you have an energy balancing mechanism. So every enemy passing you drains energy out of you, and any, every enemy that you shoot gives you life energy back. This blue circle surrounding my player, that's how much energy I have. Okay. And then the bottom left, there is the time travel energy. Uh, for right now I can go back, it charges over time. By holding down the left trigger, I go back in time. The play, black thing is playing exactly what I did before, and I, at the same time I can play again. So I've kind of doubled the power as long as I'm back in time. I, I, my, I co up with my own playing, kind of. I can go back, go back in time, shoot at myself, and cause a shockwave to blow everything oh, wow. uh, away. If I hit myself eight times uh, while being in time trouble, um, and that gives you a multiplier on your score. Like, the more players, uh, enemies are uh, on the screen doing that, the more, the higher is your multiplier and the more points you get. It's a little tactical through that. You always have to balance how much time travel energy you have left, how much, uh, um, also shooting, if I shoot constantly, that drains a little of my energy too. So I, I have to be careful with, uh, I, I should try to be accurate with my shots. So there you have a lot of possibilities. Some of the enemies you can only kill while you're in time travel. There's a, uh, a maximum of 4.3 seconds. Where'd you get the art style from? It's very like, yeah. you know, very classic, very... Yeah, it looks like a, you know, like a cross between like uh, Gradius and obviously with the side scrolling, but then it, it has some of the like kind of purity in the design of yeah. something like Ikaruga or something like yeah. that. The, the game you just mentioned, you, you had like black and white, white right, um, right. Uh, shots. Yeah. And I thought like of a, of a game that, that you can change top and side perspective. You oh. can switch between those. So it's not vertical scrolling and horizontal scrolling? No, it, it stays side scrolling, right. but you can change between top view and side view. Oh, okay, so the camera just oh. like... Right. Yeah, and right. then there are some enemies you only shoot at top view and some you can only right. shoot at so side view. Kind of like and then paper Mario right, kind of, kind of okay. like that. And then I, I thought like, but what if you could shoot an enemy not only in two perspectives, but at the same time in two different spots? And then I thought, uh, the only way to do that is go back in time and have a copy of yourself. So that's how I came up with the time travel. And then I dropped the perspective changing, because that would have made it even more harder, harder complicated. And the game is called Zeit Squared, which is term, Zeit means time in German. So you kind of have the double and the time, you know. Awesome. Ah, that's really cool. Yeah. Another game with a really good aesthetic was that snapshot. Mm. I mean, it kind of looks like a direct rip off of Yoshi's Island, but that's clearly. Well, I, was on, say I that. mean, it looks. Say it's that. on purpose, though. I mean, it's hey, you know what? I want another Yoshi's Island. That's fine with me. Why not?
snapshot. It's like a 2D platformer with a photo mechanic. So it's like a sort of a new idea. I mean, it's like the retro platformer style. Uh, right. The basic idea is that you can uh, capture objects in photos, and those objects are then stored in the photo in your inventory. And to use those objects again, you gotta you tape the photo into the world, and then all the objects drop out of the photo. How'd you come up with the art style? A big inspiration around uh, Yoshi's Island. Nice. That style, like we, we love like the, the storybook style, like the paper. So, I mean, we just try to look at games that already execute that style because this is just like a prototype version. So, is it uh, is it available to download anywhere yet? Uh, or are you still right working on it? This is a very early prototype, the cool. IGF only built. So, uh, nice. this is the only time it's gonna be playable. So. For a while. Right. Yeah. For a while. Yeah. Not forever, I hope. Not, Not forever. forever. <laughs> this is uh, this is just like our. We're getting a feel for how people are playing it. We're making some adjustments on level design right, of based course. off of what we see happening. I can imagine like something like this would help you guys out a lot. It is, it like, is uh, very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Just cool. a couple days having people play it has been yeah. We I, help. Yeah. We already made a lot of changes to the level based on problem areas. People get stuck. They don't know what's going on. So yeah, yeah. Like just this morning. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. We, we, we had the level editor, editor open this morning. And we were like cranking out stuff. So. Yeah. This segment brought to you by Netflix. Thanks to Netflix for sponsoring this episode of Co-op. With Netflix, you can rent over 90,000 titles online, including lots of Blu-ray titles, with free shipping both ways to your home. They now have over 40 shipping centers, so almost all deliveries happen in just one business day. The Netflix plan starts at $4.99. As a new member, you can get a no-risk two-week trial membership. Check it out at www.netflix.com slash co-op. Remember to type the www when using this code. We went to that, uh, that, uh, attract mode art show. Yeah. And when you see video game art, I mean, it, the best pieces always have, you know, Mario and Ryu and all your favorite <laughs> yeah. characters in them. Or being, pushed you know, together. Or, you know, recontextualized in various different ways or, you know, with some twist on it. You know, the, I don't know, that one disturbing picture with Qbert Hubert and Mario? Giving Mario the BJ. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. I love that one. That one's awesome. <laughs> it was Jason's favorite. It, it was. Uh, actually, no, my favorite was probably the Mario, Fireball Mario with Ryu. Mario uh, with Ryu. With Ryu, yeah. yeah. Who would win yeah. in a Fireball in, fight? In the e Honda level, like, that was awesome. The never released Virtual Boy games. Oh, those things were fucking cool. dude. I I feel like we're in a Virtual Boy right now. Yeah, it's like all red. red. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all that art on the walls was fucking awesome. But the true reason to be at that show, I mean, and the premise is so fucking brilliant, was to have uh, indie game developers work with uh, visual artists to create games together. So they had a bunch of, like what, four or five different pairings of artists? Four giant robot artists paired up with indie game designers. And that's where the event was at, was at Giant Robot, which was super cool. I mean, it was done by Attract Mode. Yeah. And I love how both 
Cactus and Petri's games weren't done until like the day of. <laughs> yeah, Cact Petri was totally up on the Raptors trying to finish up his game, like yeah. right, be right at the end, right before. We had talked to him the night before and he was like, oh yeah, I gotta go finish my game. I'm like, you gotta finish your game for the thing tomorrow? <laughs> I'll tell you what though, any place where you walk up, you know, outside and there's a huge crowd outside this tiny little place, you look inside the doors and Jonathan Mack is like walking around looking at the various art and the game stations in front of you, you're like, yep, yeah, I'm going in it's that place. I'm going in there and check that out. That's totally true. It's I super mean, cool. we should just say Jonathan Mack was the creator of Everyday Shooter, which is a downloadable game on PS3, which rules. The premise was the best though, like visual, great visual artist working with great indie developers, right? Right. And some of these games just came out beautiful and super fun. I mean, right. it was it was a pairing of like two great. I mean, but Derek, Derek's game was just gorgeous looking. You know, he worked with, with some. I don't know any of the visual artists, but his game was just gorgeous. It had these male and female characters walking around on one screen. A lot of them, they, they were were they all one single screen games? I think yeah, they, they were. were. Yeah. <laughs> What's interesting about the Squid one was like there's four of us were playing and um, it was like you had to gather, you had to like, basically you could work together or work against each other to get these different little power-ups. One guy we were playing with was like, hey, let's all get on the side here and like stack each other up and jump and take turns like I just wanted gathering to eat the whole time. And I didn't want to work together with anyone, you know? Well, I know, but that, that's what I think was interesting about that game is that you could work, play, like yeah. work against each other or work, work together. with, with yeah. each other. Sometimes the level would change. It just kept changing and like we didn't know when it was going to change. It was totally different and we what had was no the, idea. What was amazing to me about it is that it was a very simple game, just like hopping and grabbing jump items, heads. jump on heads, and still like, I don't know, you and I played it for probably 15 minutes. We were hogging it for a while. <laughs> it just goes to show Gorgeous, that like yeah. all you need is like one simple little thing and people can spend some time with it, it can entertain. And Petri's game, which was just capture the acorn and bring it back to your base, and that's all it was. And it was uh, like tanks on on in television or something. <laughs> <laughs> I changed my mind. That one was my favorite. <laughs> that game was great. So it was you know, such a simple design because it was you capture the acorn, and while you're trying to bring it back to your squirrel, you move slower, so yeah. it gives the other guy a chance to attack you. And that's it. You yeah. grab it, fling it, and you would score a little goal. There You were talking about the randomness in the Squid Game, and the, the gorgeous thing about this is because these are artists and these are indie game developers, you know, making sometimes one day games, you know, these came, there was a, a beauty that came out in this like randomness, like Cactus's game had, you know, was like cats. Cats and birds cats, and no, no, rabbits. But it was laser cats. That's yeah. true. Cats that <laughs> ate birds better cats. and then powered up and then shot each other with lasers. And the rabbits, when you ate the rabbits, it would give you back health. Exactly, and it was it was like this randomness on the screen that was, it was like dirty and gritty and cool and it was almost like a charcoal drawing with like ink blots all over. I thought right? this game was gorgeous. It was, it was, it was beautiful. No, the, I mean, that's the, the, funny, that's thing, the funny thing it. about it was when I asked Cactus, he was like, yeah, I hope the artist isn't upset that I ruined their art. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I thought it was amazing. Yeah. Cactus also offered to 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 like have Petri buy Cesar a ticket out to Sweden while we were there. <laughs> Petri wasn't even around, man. Hey, bro. Oh, oh. dead. Oh, no, you did. No, oh, you did. You're dead, sir. You're dead. Oh. And to people that don't, people that don't know, Cactus, he's famous for basically being able to make a game in minutes or hours and just do it, and it's done. And he is very, very prolific. He just, it's, he's constantly turning them out. I mean, him, and all the guys at the show, everyone. I hope everyone goes and like types Cactus into Google and finds Cactus Games and yeah. visits ClooneyGames.com or buys uh, Cran Physics on their iPhone. I mean, these guys just make. Amazing really, games. really, really cool games. They're super quick. They're, but they're, they're just. They've got they're some. Phenomenal. They've got soul, you know. And a lot of it is free. I mean, you can go to Cactus's site right now and get like the 40 pack of Cactus's greatest hits. Yeah. Uh, and download it like in my game. Yeah. What's Derek Yu's company? Uh, uh, Blitblock. And uh, TickSource, you can find all. Yeah. Of them. Go to TickSource.com uh, and 
and look at all the updates. Derek, that's Derek Yu's site. I mean, number one, he's a rad game indie game maker, but two, like he keeps everyone in the world yeah. updated on this, the keeps the goings the ons of indie games. Keeps and you should check it games. out. You know, yeah, there's yeah. lots of good stuff there. I'll be your lightning gun, alternate fire. I'll be your player to 1080p. I'll be that memory card that you back up on. What if life was more like a video game? We would play it all cold. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. You gotta do the GDC, right?